Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to dive deep into the world of HPV, the human papillomavirus. What is human papillomavirus, HPV? HPV stands for human papillomavirus. It is a common and contagious virus that can be transmitted through sexual contact and infects both men and women. There are many strains of HPV, some of which can lead to serious health issues. There are over 200 known types of HPV, classified into high-risk and low-risk types based on their association with cancer. High-risk HPV types, such as HPV-16 and HPV-18, are more likely to cause persistent infections that can lead to cervical and other types of cancer. Low-risk HPV types, such as HPV-6 and HPV-11, often cause non-cancerous conditions like genital warts. History of HPV Here's a brief overview. Early discovery HPV was first identified in the 1930s when a scientist observed wart-like growths on the genitals of rabbits infected with a papillomavirus. Later, in the 1950s, researchers linked HPV to human genital warts. Pap smear screening. The discovery of HPV's link to cervical cancer contributed to the development of the pap smear test in the 1940s and its widespread use. Identification of high-risk HPV types. In the 1980s and 1990s, researchers identified specific high-risk HPV types, such as HPV-16 and HPV-18, which were found to be associated with a higher risk of cervical cancer and other anogenital cancers. HPV vaccines. The development of HPV vaccines marked a significant milestone in preventing HPV-related diseases. The first HPV vaccine, Gardasil, was approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, in 2006 and protects against several high-risk HPV types, as well as low-risk types causing genital warts. About HPV The human papillomavirus HPV, is a small, non-enveloped, double-stranded DNA virus with a unique structure. Here's a brief overview of the HPV structure. Capsid. The outermost layer of HPV is called the capsid. The capsid is responsible for protecting the viral DNA and delivering it into host cells during infection. Genome. HPV has a small, circular, double-stranded DNA genome containing around 8,000 to 10,000 base pairs. The viral genome carries all the necessary genetic information for the virus to replicate and produce its proteins within the host cell. Proteins. HPV produces two main groups of proteins, early proteins and late proteins. Early proteins. Early proteins are produced during the early stages of the viral life cycle and are involved in controlling viral replication and cell transformation. Some early proteins, such as E6 and E7, are considered oncogenes as they have the ability to disrupt normal cellular regulation, leading to the development of cancer in persistent infections. Late proteins. Late proteins are produced during the later stages of the viral life cycle and are involved in forming the viral capsid. The two major proteins that make up the HPV capsid are L1 and L2. L1 proteins form the majority of the capsid structure and are responsible for self-assembly of the viral particles. L2 proteins are found within the capsid and play a role in viral entry into host cells. How HPV transmits. The most common mode of transmission is through sexual contact, but it can also spread through non-sexual routes. Here are the main ways HPV can be transmitted. Sexual contact. Genital HPV infections are most commonly transmitted through vaginal, anal, or oral sex with an infected partner. The virus can be present on the skin, mucous membranes, or genital areas, including the penis, vulva, vagina, anus, and mouth. Non-sexual transmission. HPV can be transmitted through non-sexual skin-to-skin contact as well. Infected mothers can pass HPV to their newborns during childbirth, resulting in respiratory or genital infections in the baby, though this is relatively rare. Pathogenicity of HPV. Here are some key points about the pathogenicity of HPV. High-risk HPV types, such as HPV-16 and HPV-18, have a greater potential to cause persistent infections and are strongly linked to the development of certain cancers, including cervical, anal, vaginal, vulvar, penile, and throat cancer. Low-risk HPV types, like HPV-6 and HPV-11, are associated with the development of genital warts and are less likely to cause cancer. Carcinogenesis High-risk HPV strains can interfere with the host cell's normal control mechanisms, leading to uncontrolled cell growth and potentially cancerous changes. The viral proteins E6 and E7 are primarily responsible for cancerous growth. Latency. HPV can enter a latent phase within host cells, where it remains dormant and does not actively replicate or produce new viral particles. Latent infections can become reactivated under certain conditions, leading to active viral replication and potential disease recurrence. What are the symptoms of HPV? HPV, human papillomavirus, infections often do not cause any noticeable symptoms, and many people may be unaware that they are infected. 
However, certain HPV strains can cause symptoms and health issues which include Genital warts, low-risk HPV, the most common visible symptom of HPV is the development of genital warts. Genital warts are small, flesh-colored, or pink bumps that can appear on or around the genital area, including the vulva, vagina, penis, anus, and groin. Abnormal pap smear, high-risk HPV, high-risk HPV strains, especially HPV-16 and HPV-18, are associated with an increased risk of cervical cancer in women. However, they can lead to abnormal cell changes in the cervix that may be detected during routine pap smear screenings. Anogenital cancers, high-risk HPV, in some cases, persistent high-risk HPV infections can lead to the development of anogenital cancers, including cervical, anal, vaginal, vulvar, penile, and throat cancers. How to diagnose HPV? Here are the main methods used to diagnose HPV. Pap smear. Cervical cytology. A pap smear, also known as cervical cytology, is a common screening test used to detect abnormal cell changes in the cervix. During a pap smear, a sample of cervical cells is collected and examined under a microscope to identify any cell abnormalities that may be caused by high-risk HPV strains. Biopsy. In cases where anogenital lesions are present and there is a suspicion of cancer or atypical changes, a biopsy may be performed. What is treatment for HPV? There is no specific cure for HPV, human papillomavirus itself, as most HPV infections resolve on their own without any medical intervention. Here are the main approaches to managing HPV-related problems. Topical medications. For external genital warts, healthcare providers may prescribe topical treatments, such as podophilotoxin, imiquimod, or synecatechins, which help remove or reduce the warts. Procedures and treatments. In cases where genital warts are extensive or do not respond to topical treatments, healthcare providers may recommend in-office procedures to remove the warts. How to prevent HPV? HPV vaccination. HPV vaccines are safe and effective in preventing infection with the most common high-risk HPV strains associated with cervical cancer and other HPV-related cancers. The vaccine is recommended for both males and females, typically given during adolescence before individuals become sexually active. Safe sex practices. Practicing safe sex can reduce the risk of HPV transmission. Regular screenings. Regular screenings, such as pap smears, cervical cytology, and HPV tests, are essential for early detection of any abnormal cell changes associated with high-risk HPV. Practice good hygiene. Keeping good personal hygiene can help reduce the risk of HPV transmission, especially in shared spaces like communal showers or gyms. Conclusion. By understanding HPV and taking preventative measures, we can protect ourselves and our loved ones from potential health risks. Stay healthy, and see you in the next video.